Hello everyone, so now I'm going to add Elizabeth as always, same procedure as last time. Tac, tac, she's coming. Mm -hmm. It's going to last a few seconds, sometimes more. <laughs> We are waiting for Elizabeth, but she's coming. Awesome! Yay! Here we are. So I hear you, your echo. Yep. <laughs> now we, we, we should be just you and me. Yeah, great. Yeah. So I think we can start. Yay! Well, hello and welcome. We're glad to have you all here at our co-creator blast. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, centering on the why and not dictating the how. And, uh, and we're going to start with a vision that we both really liked, um, which was the, from Helen Keller where she said, who is a very famous woman who um, did a lot for disability rights and um, who was blind and um, was not able to hear. And she said something a little bit ironic, but it, we, we really thought it fit perfect for this centering on why, and which is the only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. Um, and so this is that piece to say um, really around why do you do the things you do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, Oftentimes when we're doing this, people say, well, I work to make money. And it's like, yes, that's a result. But why do you actually do it? You could do a lot of things. Why do you choose to do this? What are, your, what are the things that mm -hmm. you get out of it? And so it's that piece to say purpose and this thing about what's really behind it. What are you really looking to affect? That's the reason behind why you do. That's the thing that when times get tough, um, when you're really being challenged or put to the metal, if it's not, if your why is not clear, that makes a huge difference in terms of what is the effort that you're going to be willing to put forth. Mm -hmm. And if you really believe in the cost and um, because um, what we're going to be talking about last, next week with beliefs is beliefs can change because those are also paradigms. But when you're looking at the values and what's really important and mm -hmm. what are you working and willing to drive forward and towards this is why it's so important, um, no irony was men, um, to focus in on the why are you doing something. And so that's what we're going to be doing. So um, I am Elizabeth Lemke. I am the chief talent navigator at Transforming Talent. So I do a lot of um, personal and um, so basically human resources, organizational consulting is what, I, what I'm into. And I'm here joined by my wonderful co-creation collaborator and captain, Anne Cecile Grava, who is also an organizational consultant and moderator and coach. Yeah, so we're excited to have you here. Um, this is always a very interactive um, blast. So should you have questions? Should you have ideas? Awesome. Bring them in. Exactly. So, so that's it. So where were we coming from? So previous blasts, we had, we've been doing a series of these blasts. You can find them on, um, you can find them on YouTube. Um, they are also there. There is also um, the first one, which was what is COVID? Mm-hmm. All spontaneous. We get calls during our, our blast. Um, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we know why we're doing it. So um, here, come here. And then the next one was no pain, no gain. So what are you doing it for? Luck, did you know where we focused in on the social research behind co-creation? Mm -hmm. Number four was adapt and thrive. Number five was being a learning fool in terms of um, how are we continuing to learn. Number six was enamoring the users' users. Value, um, number seven was value creation in a disrupted world. 
And the 7.5, which was last week, um, which was Blackout Tuesday, we did the piece around how are we focusing in on what really matters? How are we mm -hmm. focusing in on the fact that every person matters is a principle and not a platitude? And how are we, are we taking time to really create space and make sure that there is an inclusive space um, that that we are sharing. So um, that's what we did last time is really focusing on that, that opportunity for lack of a better word to really bring attention to Black Lives Matter and to also bring attention to diversity and inclusion. And so yeah. that's why we are meeting here one week later with the number eight, centering on the why, not dictating the how. And yes. so with that, I turned it over to Anne Sissy. And as you know now, because you've been watching all the blasts, yes, we know you do, uh, we have a song. And so we took this time, the theme song is from UB40, the way you do the things you do. And so I'm going to read out loud the text and be careful. So as pretty as you are, you could, you know, you could have been a flower. If you good looks for minutes, you know, you could have been an hour. The way you stole my heart, you know you could have been a croc, 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 croc <laughs> learning. <laughs> and baby, you're so smart. You know you could have been a school book, and then I have to scroll down. Well, you could have been anything that you wanted to. I can tell. The way you do the things you do. I like the way you do the things you do. And the song is really about doing things you you do, you know, and liking it. And it's also about the choice. This person could have been everything. Huh? Yeah. And the question of centering on the why is, I think this idea of start with why came from Simon Sinek. If you didn't watch his TED talk, then you should. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting to see how it shows that organization can have a greater impact and follow, followership if they really are clear about why they do things. Yeah. Um, and so when we think about the job we have as individuals and as teams and as organizations, why do we come up together? Why is it that we think that cooperating with each other will bring us? Um, and then it's about motivation when we think about why. Why am I motivated? Is it an yeah. interesting? interesting or is extracing I can't pronounce that today <laughs> intrinsic that versus extrinsic motivation exactly so to make it simple for those who are like me uh, have trouble with pronunciation <laughs> intrinsic comes from inside so it, it's a motivation that comes from your values the things that are important to you uh, the things that energize you and extrinsic Motivation comes from outside. So, for example, you do something for money. You do something to please people outside. Um, and the question is, when you are thinking about your why, which one is motivating you most? What comes from within or what comes from outside? And we really need to look at this because we may not realize, but sometimes we are more attracted by the extrinsic motivation. But when it falls out, what remains? It's the intrinsic motivation. What? Yeah, let us just move forward even if everything goes wrong. That's what motivated start. I, and, yeah. one. and if I can just share on this position something that's really, you know, something that most people know is, okay, you're working someplace and they have an, uh, and you love that place to work. You're like, oh my gosh, the way, what they're doing in terms of making an impact on the world, in terms of enriching lives, this is such a wonderful place. I would recommend this place for anybody to work here. Okay, so that's, that's that intrinsic. You're really mm -hmm. excited about the place you work. You feel like this, ha this is a reflection of your values. You feel like this is yep. a place you can really contribute. But then you go in and then you see, Oh, there's an employee referral program. I can get a thousand uh, euros if I get someone um, to come in and um, and apply, and then they're successful here. Okay, well, I really like it. I know that um, 
Sabina is looking and I think I will recommend her. Okay, Sabina comes in, she gets in an interview, she starts. Okay, well then where's my thousand euros? Hey HR, um, I recommended my friend Sabina and you're not paying me out. Yeah, well Sabina, um, she went over through the portal system and she didn't make reference to you. Yeah, but I recommended her. Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. that, that goes against our policy. We can't help you there. Okay, so what do we create? We create frustrated people who, in the initial part, wanting to well, recommend many, a friend, really being excited, really having that, ex that intrinsic motivation. But then we marry it with something that's an extrinsic, a bonus, an award. And then we take that away. So something they would have done know. anyway now has a bad taste to it. Mm -hmm. And this is that, that fine piece around we have to always be really careful when we take something that's very strongly intrinsically motivated and um, where people are really driving it. Another example is Wikipedia and then making something commercial out of it and, and tying it to an extrinsic. If you do that too often. directly, too openly, mm -hmm. then the entire purpose of what you were trying to do gets messed up. And so this is yeah. why, you know, just in my practice, I'm always very careful about how you do employee rewards for employee referrals. Not to say that we don't have rewards and recognition around it, but tying it directly is always a very dangerous game. Same thing with performance reviews. As soon as they're about payment, there goes your honesty. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. And I think it's important to see the link between those two things. Yeah. That because most of the time when I, I give courses on change management and there is a, a part of how do we reward people so that they move, like how do we motivate them? Yeah. And there is always the bad idea of motivating them with money to do something they would have done anyway. Yeah, precisely. You know? And I'm like, yeah. no, don't do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. oh, but it's a basic instinct, like it's somehow an instinct. Oh, okay, we reward them even more so that they do it more. No way. Think two times. Put yourself in the situation of the person and see if you would do it still. So that's exactly. you know, exactly. that's the thing. Like that's when empathy is very important to have. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. And so that's also the the idea of being engaged at work, um, mm -hmm. because I think the purpose of many organizations is to keep their employees as long as they can. You know, because when the employee stays and have knowledge and shares it with the organization, then the organization can grow. Um, and when we look at engagement and what are the, the parts that are important for engagement, there are three things that we can look at. It's the psychological meaningfulness that relates to the people's or the employee's need to feel valued in what he does and um, also what he does with others. And so when they have a clear goal and they understand what they're doing, that it has, that their job has a meaning in the whole process, then it also creates more motivation. Because they're like, well, when I do that, the consequence is that, and it's clear for me, and I understand it does make sense. Um, that's one very important uh, aspect. Can I, and can I give an example? So for example, when we were, we were ha I, was, I worked in automotive for a long time, and we were having some quality issues um, that were in production. And, and as well as engineering. So we needed our engineers to work closer within the production as to where this mistake was coming from. And we'd had a lot of quality circles, but nothing had really seemed to, to work until one of our sales guys said, um, who was working together with one of the technicians, why don't we bring a part in where people can see what happened? So they brought in a picture in of where a gas tank had exploded. And so it created that connection with, they had the part piece where it was just really small. It was really small to see what mistake had been made. And mm -hmm. then they saw the effect. And it was amazing the the effect on the caring of the engineers, as well as the operators on the line, the quality circles, all of a sudden, they had a lot higher engagement because it wasn't just a thermal event, which mm -hmm. sounds so far away from, hey, the gas tank exploded. <laughs> And it's yeah. that piece to say, yeah. make it real, make it so that people can understand 
that that piece around that psychological meaning fullness really has a huge impact on your quality on your um like as cecile meant, said your engagement your motivation mm -hmm. it's breaking it down what are you doing so that it makes sense and people can see the impact of what their what their their efforts actually bring yeah yeah and putting things against in perspective and again together like seeing that from all angles and being okay it's just not just a problem for me it's like oh i have a picture of something that is broken ha. yeah and um and i think this part about meaningfulness it's something that can be looked at from different perspectives and when we look our also at engagement if we want to come back about those three elements the second one is that people need to have a psychological uh, feeling of psychological safety, meaning that they feel supported by others, by their coworkers, by their supervisors, um, that there is this feeling that even if they make a mistake, oh, you will see love. <laughs> um, that even if they make a mistake, they will be able to, well, to talk about it and be safe, yeah. that they, there is no risk to make something, uh, to make a mistake. And so yep. that's something that is important if we want to keep people motivated, if we want to make sure that they are staying engaged with what they're doing. Yep. And the third part is about the psychological availability that relates to the emotional and the psychological energies that people have to perform their work. Meaning that we have to make sure that, you know, that they can be there. So if they have problems at home, they won't be able to focus. So when there is corona, like a good example, you can't ask your people to be 100% concentrated on their thing when they're worrying about something that's happening out there. And so there is this need to also, when we look at why we do things, to also look at what's happening outside of the organization that may have an impact on the why, like on why people are acting in a certain way or not. And I think that, and that's so important. I, I love the way the sentence is. It's the psychological availability relates to the availability of emotional and psychological energies to perform the work. So that's beautiful. And so, you're exactly right. What does it mean? So, okay. So if I'm on 12 Zoom meetings, my kids are taking Zoom meetings. Um, <laughs> I, for, I, have, I forgot my mask. And so I couldn't go grocery shopping. And I'm worried if I'm going to be displaced. Yeah, that's going to have effect on people's productivity. <laughs> and <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, and it's fun. It is that piece to say, you know, that's why a lot of, you know, like even um, Canada came out with the principles of, of what's going on. Of you're working from home during a pandemic. You're not doing regular work from home and making sure that that's very clear is that important and it goes to exactly what um Aunt Cecilia was saying is when you're distracted when there are so many other things going on that are also tearing at you and where you're not emotionally available is that piece also you have to check in this is why we say you are not a robot you are a human. And this is that piece around how do we have that human centered management like NCC likes to talk about, um, where people can show and, and be themselves at work, but also to just say, how is it in terms of your authenticity? How are you checking in? How are you checking in with yourself to say, mm -hmm. okay, what's going on that I'm not concentrated or what do we need to actually address and identify so that um, something positive can happen here? Yeah. And always coming back to the centering. Why, you know, why do we do the things we do? Yeah. You know, even if you like what the way the people think the, they do the thing they do with the song. But yeah. And I think that's basically the main idea of um, centering with why, knowing that it's connected to engagement and what is engagement and how do we make sure that we take into account what's happening inside and outside of the organization mm -hmm. and looking at... Um, also, people who went through very terrible stuff and still yeah. came through. Like, let's think mm -hmm. about um, J.K. Rowling, who sent her Harry Potter book to, I don't know, 30 or more house of publishing houses. And she kept doing it. She yeah. just kept moving because that's the thing. The first time you fail, you have to stand up with the why. Okay, why did I start first? 
And I think that if there is one thing that can help us overcome any difficult situation or mm -hmm. keep adapting is to say, okay, why am I doing that? What's my reason why? And yeah. every one of us has one as a person and also as an organization when we come together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think it is, it's, it is really powerful. And I think that this is something that we often, we can discount. So I remember when I was 2010, um, we had just, um, I was working again in automotive when we had a, we had an acquisition and I was part of the integration team. And I went to India um, as part of the integration work and um, talking together with some of the engineers and they were actually crying um, because which was really surprising to me but they said we work in emission systems we're making clean air do you know how many people die in India due to bad air and we're actually working on car parts that not only um, give out clean air but they actually clean the air that's on the intake and oh, it was this nice. piece to say you know yeah living in europe for such a long time you know and you get used to these things around what does environmental air quality mean and it was so that why in terms of work having a cleaner more energy efficient world mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they're really contributing to that was so meaningful that it hit me as well to say i you get used to things that are self-explanatory and that why really pulls it all back as to what is that effect and what is that purpose that we're having mm -hmm. with what we do. Yeah. And why do we choose a job and not another one? Because we have the choice and I think we sometimes forget that we have this choice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's a very uncomfortable question sometimes when you ask people, why are you doing that? And they just can't explain. Well, because I was told to, or I was raised in the way that I'm going to do that because uh, that's the way we do things here. And, you know, coming up with the way and being like, okay, I don't know. And maybe it's a question to explore for many. And I, and I think it's a really important question to explore. So you mentioned, you know, here in terms of engagement and one thing that, so, um, engagement is also that piece of how are you challenged what are the things that interest you at work mm -hmm. um, another kind of um, course of study as to where does it go beyond engagement is that piece around fulfillment in yes. terms of do you feel fulfilled at work in terms and that goes a lot into the psychological safety of do you feel like you're brave enough if you have a differing opinion can you can you actually put it out there so this mm -hmm. piece around inclusion space that belonging is not just you have to automatically agree but that you can have a dissenting a divergent opinion and mm -hmm. so that's why when we're talking about co-creation we like to go a little bit beyond oftentimes the engagement question and talk about fulfillment because there are three hallmarks of fulfillment at work and those are those piece around what is your impact so that fits mm -hmm. back with what Anne Cecile said about you know does um does what you do at work is it something that actually adds value does it make a difference so people mm -hmm. want to have an impact with what they're doing the next one is growth which goes into um the the um the third one which was that piece around do you have the availability of emotional and psychological yeah. energy so that's also growth do you feel challenged in a way do you feel like you are growing as a person it doesn't necessarily mean in terms of hierarchy that you're getting a new position it means that you know when you're learning every day there's something that's that's exciting to you. You're, mm -hmm. You feel like the fire of development under your butt. Um, those are those things that really make a difference. So that's the second one. And the third one goes into the second piece that Anne Cecile said, which is a relates to the relationship of the employee with his coworkers and superiors is that piece around relationships. Yes. So the three hallmarks are impact growth and relationships in terms of are the people that you're interacting with and working with, do, do you feel that psychological safety that mm -hmm. you can have, um, be creative be, uh, to drive something forward? So those are those pieces that we look to when we're talking about co-creation. Why is it so important to center around the why and not dictate the how is because the how this is one of the big challenges, particularly in, in organizations that are very clear about, you know, auditing processes coming mm, again from good. automotive. And so this mm -hmm. is a discussion we oftentimes have with our quality, uh, quality folks is there's one best way. 
And it's that piece to say with some things, absolutely, if this is how, um, if this is a process, if this is a process that has been um, approved and it's what you're actually selling your product with, yes, that is true. But a process and a process audit only asks you how well do you adhere to your process? It doesn't tell you if the process is quality is good. So this mm -hmm. is a piece as to why we're not saying dictate the how, because you're, if you dictate the how, you lose your ability to innovate because at some point, if I can never bring in a different idea, things are going to get very, very quiet. Okay, so yeah. this is that piece to say, you always have to understand, is this for process quality? But process quality assurance does not mean that you cannot challenge the process in terms of creatively saying, is there a different way? Otherwise, there would never be um, multiple uh, suppliers for car parts, you know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> because there is always different ways to solve the same problem. Precisely, yeah. yep. Exactly. And so that's why when you're looking around, how do you center people around the why you really need to make sure that what are those degrees of freedom that you are actually really inviting so that co-creation can happen? Because yeah. if you if everything, if you're putting people in too far of a corset, they're never yeah. going to be able to understand where do I have my own self agency what can i do to then make a difference and how can we mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they end up just accepting that they can't do anything and they just are at the end of the day like a rat running in circles and they like whatever that's the process i just do it i know there is a problem but i'm not going to say anything until it breaks down and it's yep. too late and that's yep. sad for everyone exactly know? exactly and let's not hope it's a thermal event <laughs> now Let's avoid that okay. or an explosion. <laughs> exactly. That would be bad. That would be bad. Okay. So, so that's why when we're talking about module um, here, the second module, and when we go into the co-creation and when we do this together with our customers, this is why we spend time on it because yeah. it is important to, to really say, do we understand why we're doing these things? And if you as a leader are just focusing on the financial impact or the results, you're going to lose that piece of creativity, of inventiveness in terms of what your people can bring to the table to foster new solutions, to foster more adaptive solutions because they're looking at the problem, not just saying we need to get there, but mm -hmm. questioning how do we get there? There might be a better way. Yeah. And so we do have a little test um, for this thing. And there are 10 attributes of a purpose-driven leader. Okay. So give yourself a thumbs up or a thumbs down or, mm, okay, you're in development. Okay. So those are our things. Up. Yep. This is me. Thumbs down. Yeah. Nope. Not at all. Or you're on your way. Okay. So the 10 attributes. So the first one has a backbone and stands up for personal values. No, oh, which I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Second one is, is driven to make an impact, not just for money or stat and status. I think and I even up, think exactly. it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, third, defines business outcomes through impact, not just economics. Okay, what will it actually happen? Okay, yep, I would agree. Not two thumbs, I have to improve on this one. Mm -hmm. um, recruits more intrinsically motivated talent in hiring. So yep. I'm saying nothing because I'm not hiring, but if I were... <laughs> also collaborators. Yes! <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, excuse me. Creates an environment of psychological safety for colleagues. This is really important. And this is something I'm working on because I'm just saying I'm working on this because apparently I'm very intense and have a lot of opinions. I'm nice. I love people. <laughs> so this is that piece I welcome sure. people as they are. They love to work with me. Yeah. To make sure the people who are quieter, that they know that they can, that we will speak up and that they can speak up. So that's where I, um, I wish I was here. And this is where I'm working on. Um, sets bold shared visions that inspires others. 
Um, I think that's why we're here today. <laughs> <laughs> Aligns individual team and organizational purpose. Okay, so this is where I'm also going to give myself this. And I think because, um, Aunt Cecile, why, why are you giving yourself that? Um, that's a good question. Because I, I, I don't feel like I'm doing it all the time. I'm doing, I try to do it. And then sometimes I think about it afterward. I'm like, oh, I made it. I forgot. So that's why I was, uh, I, I'm trying to do it. And then some, I'm learning. Perfect. So I think for me, it's very similar. I tend to go for the organizational or the team level. And I kind of forget about the individual. And so I do the opposite. Is you know? Exactly. So making sure, you know, how, how are we working on things so that the individual level to say, how am I connected in there, that there really is that time um, piece to say, um, and that that space that everyone can explore it. And it's not just a, oh, we're developing to this together and it's fun and we're looking at the organization and we're going to change the world. But to say, hey, it has to start with the individual. So that's why for me. Mm. No. So we complement each other because I like the other side. Like I focus too much on the people. <laughs> I'm like, you, what do you want to do? You want to go away? Go if you, it makes you happy. <laughs> the organization is going to survive. Complimentary teams. Complimentary teams. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Okay. And then the next one is um, owns biases and creates an environment of di for diversity for purpose drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think this is that piece to say, um, I would say I'm trying to go like this, to say I'm trying to, so I, um, in a lot of different work teams to get plurality of thought, working with researchers, working with um, practitioners, working with consultants, trying to get a lot of different viewpoints, but I tend to do stay in HR. So this is that piece to say, um, getting outside of that, that functional mm -hmm. expertise zone is important. Yeah. And I think I would put myself here because I also tend to speak with people who think like me, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I think it's interesting, but I also love to speak with people who think exactly the opposite. Yeah. True enough. I have to take a discussion. I'm like, how can you think that? Like, how is that possible? Explain me. Um, so being exposed to different Opinions, I find it always interesting, and I always try to get people to share their ideas mm -hmm. without attacking each other, like without coming yep, with the absolutely. I'm right or wrong. I mean, no, we're all right, you know? Yep. Based on our perspective, I am right or right, and in the middle is the reality. So it's just a perception. So that's, you know, <laughs> the it's thing. It's those glasses. It's a perception. Very good. I love it. Oh, cool. Mm. Okay, so number nine is serves as a powerful ambassador and evangelist for the organization. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, very good. We're yeah, evangelicals. Okay. All right. Um, supports colleagues in actively improving their work to derive meaning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So this is that piece to say, okay, here, and it's obvious, you know, so, Right now, Anne Cecile and I are volunteering our time because we're so passionate. This this whole project is our why. It's our it's, it's our it, baby. It's, a, it's it's absolutely a a very purpose driven project, and so you see that in terms of how excited we are about it and how we love working with people on co creation uh, when mm -hmm. they need it. And so this is that piece to say for us, it's very clear. Um. And this is why, you know, back to what Anne Cecile was saying about J.K. Rowling, it is that piece to say, how can we help, um, how can we help improve teams and team collaboration so that more adaptive solutions are possible? And so yeah. since we do have such a clear why, this is that piece to say, when we're working together with, um, with clients, it is also that piece of we're not dictating the how. We also no, look in and never. say, you know, mm -hmm. here, what are you trying to accomplish? Where, where, yep. what is, what is, what is really driving? It, what's causing friction? And how can we leverage that friction to say how can we help make things better? And mm -hmm. how are we focusing not only what's in front of us, but where are we actually going? Yeah. And so 
that just kind of as a as a personal aside as to what why are we doing this co-creation? Well, that, that's our know. one. <laughs> yeah. So so that so those uh, those ten points those um, so top, medium, low. So I did have some where I was here a little bit. So this is that piece to say as we continue to develop, it is good to just kind of check in with yourself because we can have these lofty ideas. We can have these pieces of, of grand unicorns that we want to bring into the world. But it is that piece of how do you make a why so that people can really identify what is mm -hmm. the impact? How will I grow? And how are we fostering relationships and so that we can really make a difference? And I think what uh, you could also do as a viewer is you could go through those 10 points on your own and then ask someone that knows you to answer the same question about you. Precisely. And see the difference. And I just love this kind of 360 things because you're always like, what? You see me this way? I never knew that. Uh, and exactly. so you can also learn a lot about how people see you uh, because it's, again, a question of perspective. What they see is what they want, what they can see. And someone yeah. else will say something else. And so at the end, what is real, what isn't, we come in the matrix. And so we should watch the movie again. <laughs> exactly. I think there was something like a red pill and a blue pill. And the blue like pill. That. I don't know. <laughs> something like this. <laughs> exactly. exactly. With the spoon work. That is so oh, I love it. Queen with his mind. All right. Well, we really appreciate that you guys took your, the time together today. We're also going to put this on YouTube. Um, and we will also have the opportunity, if you guys have any questions, you guys can find us here on Instagram. Um, we have Anne-Cécile Grava, we have HR Improv, um, and we have, of course, Co-Creator Space, where you can um, reach us both. Um, our next blast is going to be on, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. That's a good question. It Let's is, see. I know exactly what it is on, but I'm making myself, um, well, you, you. because we're going to be oh. talking about beliefs, principles, and culture on June 30th at 6 p.m. Uh, let me, let me be a culture uh, of love. I, there is no heart. I thought it would be hard. Hey, gal. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a, ich bin ein Hund. <laughs> All right. Ah, we got a bunny. I love it. Hi, is it a bunny? Right. It's a bunny. I thought it was a dog. Okay, <laughs> I'm totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then with that, we appreciate you guys taking part. And we wish you a wonderful rest of your week. Oh, okay. apparently I'm still French. So I'll go back to being me. Yeah, I would try <laughs> to be normal again. And Cecile gets to stay French. Oh, she's a little cutie. All right. So as you can see, since we were alone today for a lot of this, we decided to have a little bit of fun. So with that, yeah. thanks a lot. Take care and goodbye. And see you next time. See you next time. If I can go out. Bye. I can't stop. See you. Bye-bye. Ciao. <laughs>